Welcome to the Mad Singers Management Podcast from madsingers.com, where entrepreneurs and business managers learn and share. If you like the show, don't forget to leave a review. Hello, and welcome to this next episode of the Mad Singers Management Podcast. And today I have with me Christine. So, Christine, welcome to the podcast. Hi, and thank you. Christine, not everyone in the world knows who you are yet. So would you mind taking a couple of minutes and giving us a little introduction to who you are and what you sort of do in your day to day? Okay, uh, so my name is Christine Gouchou. I'm 38 years old and uh, I'm an entrepreneur from Denmark. Uh, I started my first business when I was 25 and lived in Paris and uh, it was a, a recruitment agency that I started with um, another French guy that I knew back then. Um, and that was a really positive experience. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We were lucky to have a lot of customers. So the company grew. Um, and so it was pretty successful. And I had that for a couple of years and then moved to Denmark and uh, sold my part of the company. Uh, the reason is that uh, we started having children, my husband and I, and I wanted to have more family time. And we thought that Denmark is a more family friendly country than uh, France and especially Paris where it was all work, work, work. Um, it's not that I don't like working. I actually enjoy it very much um, because I think it's fun to work when you are, when you have your own business. Yep. Uh, but I also wanted to, yeah, but I also wanted to be with, be with my ch children and it seemed easier to combine those two things uh, when living in Denmark. So I moved to Denmark in 2008. The best time I thought to start a new business because I didn't, not because of the crisis really, but also because I didn't know anyone in Denmark at that time. I'd been away for a lot, many years. And so starting a company and not knowing anyone business-wise, I thought that would be um, a bit risky, especially since my husband didn't have a job and we had two small kids. So um, I worked five, six years as a consultant, um, first within recruitment and HR, and then I expanded it also to management and sales and how to build up sales organizations. And then I started my own company again six years ago when I found out that I was pregnant with twins. And I had decided that I wanted my freedom and flexibility back, but also um, I felt that I knew the Danish market well enough that I had the courage to start over again because all the time I wanted to have my own business again because it was such a positive experience when I lived in France. And so it sounds like a great opportunity. I mean, you, you're like, I'm having twins. Let's start a business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it's my, it might not be the, the rational thing to think, but I thought I would just have more time and flexibility to work around it rather than to have a usual nine to five job and then four kids where two of them were babies. That just seemed overwhelming. Whereas uh, I think the positive thing was that what has happened since I had my company in France is that a lot of things uh, has changed on the internet. So suddenly I was like, oh, you can do webinars, you can do newsletters, you can do online marketing in a whole different way than you could back in 2005. And so I saw this as an opportunity to, uh, to work on a dis different business model where I could use uh, all the online possibilities uh, to grow my business and work more from home and not having to go out and meet people so much. And so it was a great way to start when you have babies at home <laughs> because it's more, it's more flexible and it still um, made me uh, a living. So um, I started, a, I call it most business. It means a mom's business uh, in Danish. And what I do is uh, I help women entrepreneurs who want to have their own business and the, while also taking care of their family. So that was my main focus because a lot of, business advice, or at least back then, and at least in Denmark, was very oriented on, okay, you have to be a white male and no family. And that didn't work for me. And I didn't see people giving advice for women who had a family and still wanted to start their own business. So um, that's what I got into. Uh, and I've grown a community in Denmark with about 500 members from all over the country. And nice. Doing a, yeah, a lot of workshops and counseling. And then last year, or... Well, it's still this year, actually, because we're late December. But in, in January, I started a new company uh, with a partner, and it's uh, within IT um, and an IT consultancy. So a whole new thing, <laughs> but still uh, fun because I wanted to 
do uh, to have a business where I'm no longer the product. I wanted to run the business and grow the business, but I didn't want to do both sales and being the product at the same time yep. as I did before and for so many years. Um, so that's what I've been doing the, the last year. Excellent. Yeah, I can I can totally relate to that because uh, with my coaching, like I, I have a, a bunch of products that isn't me, but uh, I'm when, when you when you run a specific coaching company as I do, you you obviously end up being the product in a lot of the cases, and yeah, it's definitely yeah. it it takes away some flexibility for sure. Yeah, I mean it, it's fun at the same time because I love giving advice and helping other people. I, I really enjoy that, but it also puts a limit to to what you can do with your time. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, I, I totally relate. I mean, so, so my audience is primarily online business owners. So it's primarily people who run uh, businesses, either location independent or like some of them have an office, but you know, it's, it's generally run as online business and, um, yeah. Anything from selling selling stuff like e-commerce and uh, information product and so on, or to consultancy and uh, more into the sort of freelance agency type model, where, where where they often start out as freelancers, but then realize like they can hire people to do the work, and you know slowly they build agencies and so on. So there there is a ton of opportunities, and I, I think it's very interesting uh, that you work specifically within Denmark and specifically with women because I think. Denmark is probably a bit behind in the whole online thing when it comes to all these online business models, right? Because uh, what I see, at least from abroad, is that uh, in, in many, many countries that have been taken up big time, but I still don't see the same uptake in Denmark when it comes to the amount of people actually making a living or, and making a good living from from online businesses specifically, right? But there's still a lot of these office jobs and uh, that thing yeah. where... Where? I don't know if, if Dan Dan the Danish people are more skeptical to buy like online courses and online stuff compared to, to for example, the US or, or what it's all about, because I see a lot of people trying, as you say, to start an online business who can see the idea with the flexibility and you can do online courses and that's really nice and you can like automate your income, except that it's, as you say, it's really difficult to make it work in Denmark and very few people succeed in that. Yeah, I think uh, actually the size of Denmark is probably a challenge as well to yeah. some extent, right? Because yeah. um, for myself, like at, at one point I was looking at, at actually looking at like, was it worth actually focusing on Denmark? And, and I'm like, you know, I mean, definitely you can make money, but, but the market is just so much smaller. I mean, my, the majority of my clients are, are generally based either in US, UK, Australia or Asia. And, and it's yeah. just like when you start looking at Denmark and 5 million people, it's, it, it is significantly smaller, right? So you are looking at totally it different is. scale and so on. So, so that's probably to do with it as well. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it was a size and a cultural thing. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, um, I'm, I'm super interested in the management aspect of things. So, so how do you think management, like when you're, when you're thinking about a team and particularly like starting up a new business and so on, how do you think management? How do you, how do you consider the people and sort of what's your mindset around management? I think uh, management when you start up a team and you start up a business is very different from like say corporate life where you have a, a big company and many employees and yeah. lots of people because normally when you run a business and you're a startup you don't have any money or maybe you have some but not very much so um, it can be uh, difficult to <laughs> to hire people and and offer them a decent salary compared to what else is on the market so you yeah. have to offer something else and so in that way, I think you need to look for people that are, even though they might work for you, but they still need to have an entrepreneurial mindset. They need to think it's fun to grow something, to be part of something from the beginning, and that they are motivated by trying something new and that there are less rules and then they can have something and make it grow and have more influence maybe than, rather than what you have if you go into a big company. Yep. Uh, I know from also from myself when I started out, uh, back in, I mean, my first real work experience was when I lived in Paris and I started out in a small company. And what I really liked about it was that I got to do so many things that normally when you're, I don't know, 23, 24, you would never do. 
in a big yeah. company, people will never let you do that. And I could do that here. And I think that's like some of the advantages that you have that you can give people more responsibility, they can try more stuff. Um, so it has to be more about the passion and the fun and the thing that you're part of that you're building um, that you need to focus on to to motivate people. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with that. I, I that's usually what I recommend to people, right? Like, play play that card of responsibility because you know when you're a, a, a business with with two people or three people or five people or something, right? Everyone wears more hats, and everyone will naturally just have more responsibility and end up doing many more different things. Where if you work in a big corporation and you know your 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 job is to click a button, you, you know then. Like that yeah. that's what it will be for a while, right? And you can obviously grow and stuff, but growing up through an organization, I've I know that from myself, that can take that can take many years, right? And yeah. uh, that that sort of influences of really uh, being able to offer people those opportunities of of getting that empowerment and, and really feeling more responsible for the results is, is absolutely key. So I, I, I love that. I think one of the, the difficult things when, when you do that with a startup is that you really have to set expectations with people because if they haven't tried it before and they've only tried working in a, a big company, then there might be like a cultural clash because they'll still expect something else than from what they get. And that part can be, um, might be difficult. So you really need to look into, do they know what, what this is about, what startup life is, because it's so different. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense as well. I, I think, uh, I mean, so one, one of the businesses I run is uh, it's an outsourcing business in the Philippines where mm-hmm. um, where we have a lot of sort of virtual assistants and people working from home and so on. And, and a, a little bit the similar way, if people haven't tried working from home, if they haven't experienced the like the requirement and discipline and so on, that can be a very, very difficult change if you haven't tried it, right? And uh, yeah. we, we, have, we, we generally try and find people who have done it before just because uh, in the beginning, the first time you, you work from home, like that can be quite difficult, right? To, to really get the right uh, mentality and mindset behind and get enough stuff done. And I think that's very similar to this stuff in some degree, because basically people end up, you know, in a very unfamiliar situation and, you know, they have yeah. to adapt to it in a lot of cases. Yeah. And also I think that when you have a, a big company, often you can afford to pay people a salary and they can learn the routines and then if they start making value for the company within six months or a year that's nice but if you have a startup people have to bring value to the table from day one and that's like also a different thing you can't have somebody who's just like there oh i'm just here to watch and learn and then i'll get into it in a couple of months you need people who want to be like doing stuff from the beginning and more i think having the approach that it's okay to make mistakes fine by me you can always adjust as we go along. It's very rare that you do something and then you can't go back um, back on it and readjust it and, and make it better. But to have people that are too paralyzed or not doing anything because they don't want to make mistakes um, yeah. doesn't work in a in a startup. You really need people that are hands on and that go into it. It's like okay, I take responsibility, I do things, and then we improve as we go along. Yeah, and and then to to play the other side of that coin is I, I actually see a. a quite a few business people who who struggle a lot with that side of things because they are uh, you know they it's their company and they're so uh, understandably they're so protective of it but but sometimes it, they can also struggle to let go a little bit right because they're so afraid that stuff yeah, happens they want to control, you know, yeah. stuff breaks and and uh, learning that that side of it is is uh, really critical as well for business owners and like it, i mean you must have seen that as well working with with moms that are trying to start up shops or what what's your experience with that yeah well most of them they they start up like just being on their own so it's not that big of a uh, i haven't seen that as a big of a challenge and i think maybe for women it's it, it might be different i know we're not supposed to say that men and women are different and all that stuff but i, I, I fundamentally believe that <laughs> I, I, I do too i do too and it's not a bad thing um i'm not saying we're not equal i'm just saying we're different right yeah. and i think that at least for also what i've experienced in my own case is that um we are maybe we're too nice or we want to be friends with people and not being businessy enough 
And you can't always afford that when you're a startup. I mean, you have to look at our people uh, adding value. And I've actually had two, I'd say, I learned two lessons, right? Um, On on that account, uh, if you want to talk about learning lessons. Once I started a company with another woman and she's just like this brilliant leader um, and very good within uh, public institutions where she could do turnarounds and save a lot of money and make people grow and she was great with teams and just like really amazing and i was just so happy that we were starting a company together but then she never start tried starting from scratch so once we were in our new office and she just sat there and she stared at the computer and she was paralyzed and she didn't do anything and after two months i had to say to her okay we've got to stop this because i'm working for free and you're not doing anything and she's like, yeah, but I thought I could learn. And I'm like, but we don't have the time for you to learn. You need to take action to make things move forward. And it yeah. might not be pretty because it's not pretty. and You don't always know what you're doing. And you need to change your mind a lot of times because you have an idea and it doesn't work. And you need to do something else instead. But you can't just sit there and do nothing. And yeah. so I lost uh, that friendship on, on that account because she, she wasn't okay with the fact that I stayed, said it's not working. We have to stop this. And it wasn't yeah. personal for me because I really, really liked her. I still like her, but I, I mean, I haven't talked to her since because she just got so, so angry with me. Yeah. Um, so, so you need to be be careful with the, the whole. Also, if you like people and is it business or is it friendship? I, I also recently in my new business had another friend come and help, uh, who was just supposed to help with a part of the sales, and yeah. also it was not really moving forward. Um, and then she didn't get along with my business partner. And I said, okay, we have to stop it because we're only the three of us. And if the two of you don't get along, that it's not going to work. And she's yeah. like, but can't you kick your business partner out? And I'm like, no, I can't. And I'm sorry. And it's not personal. It, this is business. I mean, but uh, for her, it became personal. And then the same again, she didn't want to be friends anymore. And I'm like, I'm, I'm really sorry about that because yeah. We're just trying to see if we could work together. And then the cost of that um, was actually quite high, not financially, but on a, but on a personal level. So yeah. you need to really look into the people that you work with, that they understand this is business. We need to do something. We need to act to make things move forward because otherwise at the end of the day, we don't have any money. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, honestly, I, I really love the lesson that you, that you have from that. Right. So I, I, I work with a lot of people and they're always like, how friendly can I be with my staff? And, you know, and, and what I always tell people is it, that's not really a hard and fast rule because it really depends on who you are. If you knowing your staff really well, if you hanging out with your staff outside of work means that you won't be able to make those tough decisions, then you shouldn't. Right. But again, I know a lot of people just just like yourself and, and myself included that, you know, I, I don't have a problem letting someone go if they're not pulling their weight. Um, and, and honestly, I, for me, it would never fr- affect the friendship from my point of view. But I'm totally no, aware it that it could. F- yeah, I'm totally aware. Rejected. Exactly. Right. And, and I've actually had a couple of those where, where they've gone south, but we've managed to maintain rela- relationship and, and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've definitely also had a couple of partnerships that have gone very sour. Um, yeah. And that have, that have been really tough. Right. So, um, but, but I think like the way you look at it from that perspective is, is really good. And I think that's, it's something that's not being talked about enough. I, I see so many entrepreneurs always talking about, yeah, let's do a partnership and, and, and sharing the burden, for example, can be great in some aspects, yeah. but I, <laughs> I actually say I, 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 I'm more likely to walk into a marriage than a business partnership. Like I, yeah. I, I, t- I take it more serious uh, in the sense of not that I don't take marriage serious, but, but in the sense that, you know, the d- diligence you need to do have to yeah. be significantly, significantly. But it's, it is like being, it is like being married because you have uh, money in common and that's what like changes things. If you have these obligations toward each other, I feel like a business partner is like being married and that's why I've been, I had a business partner, then I've been 10 years without one, and now I have one again because it's like, I'm not going to partner up with just anyone. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned my lessons. <laughs> I mean, it's great if you find the right one. It's like so amazing to have somebody to share all the ups and downs and everything. But if you don't have the right person, it's uh, it's tough. Yeah. And, and I, I think I... Another, 
yeah, of counseling also with, with women or other people who want to start a business together just to see, are you right for each other? And say, before you go see, see a lawyer and you do all the paperwork, just let me ask you a few questions and then see if you still want to work together. And I often ask about like their intention and motivation. And most of yeah. the time they go like, okay, no, we don't want to work together. Yeah. <laughs> Actually. Yeah, and that's, I mean, I, I work a lot with partnerships as well. And, and a lot of the time, like even upfront, like even simple things, like what's your goal with this thing? And, and one person like, oh, I want to make some quick money. And the other person is like, oh, I want to build this business for the next 40 years. And you're like, well, that doesn't really, <laughs> that, that doesn't tie in well, right? So that, there's definitely yeah. a lot of things that you need to, to go through. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Interesting. So. Very good. Any other particular lessons so from, from the people who have been coaching? So they've mostly been starting from scratch, is that correct? Or uh, some of them yeah. have a business already? Or? Oh, I have, I've had both. I've had both. I have people that are starting from scratch and then from people who have had their business to about maybe five, ten years. And then I've also done big companies, but that's a whole whole different game. whole different game, yeah. Game. So, so, so for people who are just starting out, like what, what are you sort of seeing being from a management standpoint and from a business standpoint, if you will, what, what is sort of some of the key lessons that you feel you've learned? Well, I think that an important thing to do if you want to start something up is like to test your idea to see if it works because a lot of people can work for six months, a year, years on their idea or their product instead of seeing other actually customers out there to buy it and what do they want. Uh, so they waste just a lot of time and resources on something that might never gonna work or that need changes. So instead of wanting something like perfect and great, because it's it's nice to say that you're working on it, gives you a good feeling, go out yeah. there and test it. Find somebody who can try it and give you feedback and get as much feedback as you can as quick as possible. So like they say, uh, try it off or let it die quick because if it's not working it's not working then you should focus on something else so i think yeah. that's like really important if you're just starting up instead of spending all this time or like what color should this button have on my website it's like nobody cares it's not important at this time think more yeah. about how do you get traffic and visitors to your website and then you can worry about the color of the button right i mean obviously yeah. there's a difference between using pink or dark blue but but often, you know, people get into these really small details that are not relevant to the business, but it just feels like then they're doing something, but they're not making it move forward. So you should like really just focus on what you're doing now. Is it making my business move forward to the goal of getting customers on and earning money? Or is it just keeping me busy? Right, exactly. Because so many people feel comfortable when they feel they're busy, when they feel they're doing yeah. something. But if it isn't making a difference, really, it's it's not it's not even that it's not moving you forward. It's really moving you backwards. Yeah, because as time progresses, you, that's difficult. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll give you an example. When I started out in most business, I mean, you have all these things that people would advise you to do when you do an online business or coaching, and it was like you need pictures for your website, and I'm like. I'm not getting any pictures. I just had twins. I feel that I look like shit. I don't feel like getting pictures and I don't have the money for a photographer and that's not what I'm going to do. So I just bought some like cheap stock photos for what, $5. And I made my website just with text and then a free uh, PDF that you could download with advice for how to build a business and have time for your family at the same time. Yeah. And I got like, uh, I mean, obviously I did stuff to get tra traffic to my website, but I got like 3,000 people to sign up for my newsletter without having a picture I mean, yeah. on it. And everybody's like, you can't do that. And then like, or you're not using the same font size for all of the, the text. And I'm like, who cares? People yeah. read it, they like it, and it looked okay. But obviously with 100,000, I could have uh, Kronos or $15,000, whatever. I could have a way more beautiful website. Obviously I could. But it's not important to the thing of me getting customers and earning money. Yeah. And that's why at least know, testing like, the, the idea. Minimum? Yeah, the minimum to see does it work? Are people interested? And then you can like, always improve it and have it look more professional. But often you don't need that much. And uh, I'll say both my my two two big businesses right now. Uh, I I was doing coaching for about six years before I actually got a website. I only got a website last year, and I've yeah. never had a problem getting clients even without a website, right? And everyone's like, "How oh, can you don't have a website?" And it's like end of the world. And I'm like, "Well, people are knocking my door. It's not my focus right now, right?" Yeah. 
Um, you can network in other ways and you can do podcasts or <laughs> whatever. Exactly. But there are many things you can do. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's another thing I think that's important important when you start a business look into how how do you want to do sales and marketing because there are a thousand things that you can do out there but do something that you're comfortable with so if you're comfortable with writing do a blog if you like doing videos do videos but do something that you can keep doing on a on a daily or weekly basis because sales and marketing is all the time so don't choose something that you don't like I mean, yeah. there are so many ways that you can get yourself out there and be seen. So find a way that, that works for you with your personality and the way that you are. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Uh, and I think really like, from, from my point of view, what, what I see all the time is people find something that works, but they get bored with it. So they try different things. And I'm always like, when you find something that works, even if you get tired of it, you find someone else who can keep doing it. Because if you stop doing it and your customers stop coming in, then you screw your business over. And they're like, yeah, but maybe, you know, this new social media will work much better. And I'm like, yeah, but you have something you know works. Don't exchange that with something that might work. <laughs> yeah, right? and it takes time every time you have a new social media platform, then you need to rebuild an audience. So it's not done instantaneously unless you are, I don't know, keep on keeping up with the Kardashians and have, I don't know how many viewers, then it's difficult. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's difficult if you're not on TV somewhere. <laughs> That's a, well, TV is a, a still a decent media, it's but it's not, not that easy to get on it. But uh, no. yeah. It's not, it's not, but it's just, you need to be realistic about it as well. Like, yeah, definitely. Well, well, what's, what's one of the biggest sort of challenges you have ever had from a management standpoint in your business career? Well, I think actually it's been the two partnerships that I mentioned are working with, with friends where you have to let, let go of the friendship because the other person is not seeing it just as a strictly different uh, business decision. I think that's very difficult because obviously I could make the decision and I, it doesn't take me long. If I can see that it doesn't work, then I make the decision, but it's still hard. It's not like I'm, I mean, I still have feelings. It's not like I go, Yoo I made the decision and she's stupid. It's like, no, I'm actually really sad. Yeah. So I, I think that's the, the toughest uh, part probably. Um, yeah. Definitely. And, and how, it's like and how, when it goes wrong. How, like, you say you, you make the decision and you move on, right? But, but like, it's it something that you feel in, in the two, two examples if you've gone through. Do you feel that in those cases, because it was friends and because you felt those friendship, that it maybe took you longer than you would have liked to make those decisions? Or do you think you were mm, pretty, no, straight to no, the point? No, because, like, with the last, the last case, it took me three we will only work together for three weeks. And that's also why I thought that re the reaction from my friend was like, whoa, that's big. We tried this for three weeks. It didn't work. We've been friends for 35 years. And okay, yeah. well, uh, but but it didn't take me long. I mean, I could see it wasn't working. It's not, not working. And I'm not like going to put more energy into something that's really not working. I mean, yeah. Uh, you have oh, to that see, makes is sense. It, is it worth it? So, so I can make, I mean, when I say, and the other one, it, it took two months. And I think it, it wasn't that long either because I needed to, in the beginning, I was just so focused on the business that I didn't notice that she wasn't doing anything. I was just like, oh, this is fun. And then I'm like, oh, actually, what are you doing? And I'm like, hmm, she's yeah. still not doing anything. And I'm like, okay, this is not working. But I wasn't paying attention to it at first because I was just like super excited. And that's, yeah. I think the way I am, I'm very positive and very optimistic. So I didn't didn't really notice it at first. But um even that though you're sense. very positive and optimistic, you need to be able to to cut through and make make these kind of decisions. Yeah, no, that, that's great, and that that's obviously very good for you. You have that personality because I've I've definitely seen I've worked with a bunch of clients that have really struggled and probably taken years for them to make the right decisions, right? But but uh, yeah. That's... Yeah, but I think it's important to be able to separate things and say, this is the business, this is the personal stuff, and really try and keep that apart, because otherwise it will become very difficult to run your business. And it doesn't mean that you don't, I mean, you're still nice to people, you're still honest and genuine with the people that you work with. It's nothing to do with that, but it's yeah. just not that this is a business relationship. So if you want to be friends, you can be, be that outside of the business. But if the business is not working, then you should separate the, the two things. Yeah. Would, would, would you 
consider doing a partnership or, or employing a friend again? Or have you sort of been very discouraged from that now? No, I haven't been discouraged because I just say I'm an optimist. <laughs> I'm like, why shouldn't it work the next time? But I think yeah. that are things that I will be more aware of the next time that I would talk through with that person, really say, these are my expectations and maybe write them down. So they'll say, this is what actually I believe. And if are you okay with that? And then, so maybe spend more time on, on setting the expectations yeah. and then see if we're still... Uh, okay both of us with it then then i would would do it again because it's i mean it's nice to work with friends on the other hand with people that know you and that you feel good with i mean that's fun if you can do it um but most of the time i'd say it's, it's difficult yeah it's more uh, that you work with someone and then because you work together then you become friends i think it's easier that way around than being friends and then working together actually. yeah yeah so i uh, probably a year and a half ago or something, I, I had one, one of my best friends uh, from my corporate career. I hired him into my business and that was, I, I was definitely very conscious about that whole sort of framework and so on. But the, the good thing was we, we had worked together in a business setting before yeah. and we knew each other very well from a business standpoint, which made that decision and that whole sort of the framework a lot easier and that have been absolutely phenomenal. But, yeah. but that, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I'd say I, I spend a lot of time thinking about it and so on, right? Because particularly because when you have strong friendships, I'm, I'm definitely aware that there's a higher risk that things can, you know, go the wrong way, if you will. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you have to be aware of it. And I think I was maybe a bit, I don't know if I was naive, but I thought like, obviously, we can work through that and we would still be friends. And see even if it, it didn't work out business wise. And well, I guess not. Yep. So, uh, but I think that, yeah, most of the time it's the other way around. You can become friends with the people that you work with. Yeah. Or at least <laughs> I do. <laughs> yep. that, it makes sense. And, and again, when, when you work, particularly as an entrepreneur, you end up spending a lot of time with the people that you're working with, right? So that, that yeah. also a good way to start, start friendships and so on. So, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. What's the biggest challenge for you coming up? Like, what, what's sort of the biggest thing that you have you're working on right now that that you sort of? <laughs> right now, uh, well, actually, <laughs> talking about partners and who you work with, we are working on expanding our business and getting more partners in. And right now, we're in the process of um, finding those partners uh, mm -hmm. within IT consultancy, and so that's um, a big deal because then we will suddenly be a lot of people that need to work together and. It's a whole different setup um, because because they're consultants, most of the time they will be out with the customers. So it's not like we'll be sitting together, but we will still then have a company together. So yeah. it's um, a whole new way of uh, doing things and maybe trying to onboard eight or 10 people at the same time. Yeah. Um, but it's to get some more, you could say muscles at once to, to take it to the next level rather than doing one person at the time and then it takes forever, we'll try and do Many people at once, uh, and it might be stupid, it might be good. I don't know, I've never tried it before, uh, but it's, um, it's definitely a challenge. I think the good thing is because, I mean, there's me and my business partner, but the other people we don't know that well. So it's really with a business focus, and I think that part is good because you yeah. get a different discussions rather than if, if we were all friends wanting to do something. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think uh, it's, it's also... Like, it also, like, it, when you do that, when, when you onboard a lot of people at the same time, one of the challenges, if you onboard one or two and something isn't working, you, you're often spending, you're often making it run too long because you really want it to work, right? Whereas when you onboard a yeah. couple of people, like, you might realize some of them absolutely doesn't fit and you might realize that some of them are amazing fits, right? And that way it, it's when you have more comparable data, when you have more partnerships and, and so on like that, then it also makes it much easier for you to actually compare and see what works here and what doesn't work and then see which of those partnerships will, yeah. will be good in the longer term, right? So that, yeah, exactly. that sounds, sounds interesting. Exactly, but it's still like, um... Uh, you could say a big turnaround and also you need like to get all the lawyers and paperwork done and there's this whole very businessy part to it that I think is just extremely boring. 
<laughs> I mean, I think like most entrepreneurs, I think it's fun to do things and go out and about and but all the whole contracts, lawyers, accounting, uh, but you, you have to do it. Yeah. You have I, to I, do I, it, uh, but I don't think it's that, that's that much fun. It's not the fun part, let's say that way. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that, that's super exciting. Um, just before we finish off, any sort of hints and tips and so on for for people particularly starting out or sort of early stages of their entrepreneurship, like any, any sort of hints and tips you want to share with them, any resources or anything like that? I don't know if it's uh, a resource, but a simple thing to do that a lot of people forget is just to do the simple math around your business idea like where would the money come from how many customers do you need to have or how much do you need to sell to actually make a living and i'm not saying earn a lot of money maybe it's just like earning three thousand dollars a month and you can you can live from that because you might not need that much but you need to do like the simple math um, and especially if it's people doing coaching like yourself because they might sell their time too cheap because they forget insurance and retirement and all that stuff and holidays that you need to add on to the price. Yeah. So just do, do that simple math because your prices might be too low for the, from the beginning or the products that you have. You might need to sell a million a month for you to make a living and that's not realistic from the beginning. Yeah. So you need just to, to do that once, to have an idea of, okay, I start today, then when can I live from it? Yeah. Will it be in a month, in six months, in three years, so that your expectations are realistic? Because, yeah. I mean, some things, uh, I've, I've been doing recruitment and counseling, so I've been trying, like, starting up and making money from the first month, but I'm also I'm good at sales and networking, uh, and that kind of things you, you can go out and sell. Um and you might just need one or two customers and you're, you're good to go. But uh, a lot of things, you can't do that. And then you, you really need to do the math and figure yeah. out what will it take and then how, how will you do because it's, um, it can be very stressful when you're being very active and you're not making any money because it takes time to get customers, to gain their trust, to grow a community. And you're like, am I doing all this wrong? Why am I not making any money? And it's just like, no, it's a question of time. And you could see that if you did the math, that you, it's not realistic that you can live from it by now. So then people yeah. get really stressed and then they do other things. Instead of keeping their focus, they try other things. And then it's, yeah. uh, it's even less efficient because they don't keep to the strategy. Exactly. And I'm, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge believer in the thousand day rule with, where, where basically most businesses to get from, from ground zero to, to a sustainable good business, like it generally takes three years, right? And, and uh, unfortunately, so many people give up like two years into it or two and a half years into it. And you, you can see they aren't far from making it, but you know, they've been, they've been running for so long and they're just giving up and it, it's really a shame to see, but it, it very much come down to those expectations and the, the better you, you sort of know your numbers up front and you know what you're aiming for that. Yeah. Uh, Totally agree with you. That's that's then, critical. Yeah, just be aware because there are so many myths out there. If you do online business, uh, as you say, like you hear all these uh, like online business gurus saying like you could just automate your income and get like passive income, and it's like there's no such thing as passive income. You need to do something to keep the money coming. It's it doesn't exist, and you can't do it overnight. And they yeah. will try to sell you like just buy my program and in three months you follow step by step, I'll guide you, I'll coach you, you'll be a millionaire. And it's like, no, 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 you won't. Or, and like, or, or there are so many they will be a millionaire. millionaire. <laughs> yeah, they will be millionaires thanks to you. But just be really aware of that because there are so many people out there trying to tell you, maybe not as much in Denmark, but I think at least from the US, like that you can do this quick fix with automated passive income and um, no, you can't. <laughs> That's uh, yeah, it's very very interesting. I run, as I said, I run at one of these virtual assistant companies in the Philippines, yeah. and so many people come to us like, "Can you hire me someone to build me my business?" And I'm like, it, "You don't go to hire someone for three hundred dollars or five hundred dollars a month, and they just build you a business. It doesn't no. really work like that." But so many people sell these illusions that, "Oh yeah. yeah, just do these three things, and you know, in no time you'll be a gazillionaire and all that stuff." So. And that doesn't exist. That really doesn't exist. So just be very aware of that. 
and aware of your own situation because obviously if you come from let's see the business of uh, within the pharma industry which is, is a huge business let's say you're really good in whatever you do there and you go there and you take customers with it with you from that then you might be able to make a lot of money from day one because you come from an industry where there are a lot of money to go around pharma or IT or whatever and then if you have been working for maybe 10 15 years you know a lot of people you have a huge network then yes you might be able to make a lot of money from actually day one but it's not because you just started a business then it's because of the 10 or 15 years of work you've already done within that yeah. industry exactly yeah and so so you should add that to your success it's not the same as a lot of people they want to start out and they start out in a new industry where they haven't been before yeah and then it's, it takes even longer so it's like yeah. you have to be aware of that also. Are you on familiar ground or is this completely new? And that's also why I didn't start a company right away when I moved back to Denmark. Yeah. Because I like I had really nothing to start from. So it would take too long uh, compared to the family situation that I had and that I needed an income a bit faster. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I, I think, I mean, touching on networking, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that I see most entrepreneurs undervalue because I, I think in the beginning they're so focused on, oh, I need to sell this thing and so on. But like it, it really takes a while to build up both your network and, you know, build up like a client base and so on. And, and, and the best way to do it, like the best way I've built my businesses is, is literally get to know a lot of people, show those people that you're a sensible human being, you know what you're talking about. And like, that's a great way to get clients because if, if someone refers you like that, you, you're significantly more likely to, to close a sale like that than someone who randomly bumps into you, right? Yeah. And it's because of trust. It's because people need to trust you. And obviously you build trust way faster if somebody refers you than if, you have, if you're an unknown person and then they need to get to know you. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, that's a very good question. I will, um, yeah, if people want to get hold of you and so on, what, what's the right place? What's the best places to find you and find more about you and so on? Well, the good thing is that uh, my Christine Gouchot, I think nobody else is called that. So I'm really easy to find if you just Google me. <laughs> and yep. then you could either, depending on where people are from, they could find me on my Danish Morse Business webpage. They can find me, I have a Christine Gouchot webpage in English, or I have the Nordic Data Intelligence webpage for what I do now. I'm on LinkedIn. So there are just like many places where I can be found. I don't think it's that difficult. <laughs> Excellent. I will. I'll make sure we add all this to the show notes so people can uh, can get a shortcut to it. That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking with you today. And uh, yeah, have a have a great New Year's when you get that far. Thank you, and you too. And thank you very much for inviting me. It's been very interesting. So uh, thank you for this opportunity, and uh, a great New Year to you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Mad Singers Management Podcast. Please leave a review. It means the world to us. You can also learn more about management at madsingers.com.